I've gotten a few questions lately about why I didn't move to the US with Alex. And that made me think it was time to do a Q&A. So I am going to answer that question today, why I don't want to live in the States, as well as other questions. One of them is about ghosts, and I have a little story to tell you there. So I'm just going to start a little fire and then we can get going. So I have written down some of your questions in here, but I'm going to start with answering the question I've gotten the most lately. And that is the one of why I didn't move to the United States um, with my ex-boyfriend Alex. And if we take aside the fact that Alex and I broke up because we wanted different things out of life, I wanted a more simple life out here at the countryside, then there are also several reasons why I don't want to live in the United States. And this is gonna be a loaded question or an unloaded answer, I guess, uh, because there will be some politics in this. So I just want to say from the beginning that I respect everyone's opinion, no one has to agree with me, you are entitled to think something completely else. The biggest reason is that I've spent enough time in the United States that I, I can see that it's not a livable country. I just would never want to live in a country where people don't have free healthcare, a human basic right where education is so expensive that a lot of people can never pay off their debt. In the US you don't really have any maternity or paternity leave and there is no paid vacation for, for everyone. I'm used to having at least five weeks of minimum paid vacation annually. I don't want to live in a country where people can't afford medication that they depend on to stay alive. It's just so bizarre to me. Here I have free health care and uh, the education is not only free. I am actually taking a photo course right now and not only is this free for me, I actually get a little bit of money each month from the government because we recognize that not only is it good for me to educate myself but Sweden as a whole will be better if people are educated. Everyone who is in school get money. And this is not just things about me that benefits me. For example, I don't plan on having kids but I still think it's very, very important to have an extensive paternity leave. Here in Sweden we have 480 days that you can split between the dad and the mom, or the parents, because it doesn't have to be a mom and a dad. Yeah, 480 days split, paid, and you get to keep your job. Uh, so even though I have no intention of having kids myself, uh, I would much rather pay higher taxes than have a system that allows parents to build this bond with the newborn. Most Americans seem to think that taxes is something bad, almost something evil, and it's not quite like that here. And I think that makes Sweden a much more livable country than the States. And a reminder, I know this is very loaded, talking about politics like this but this is from my view from my perspective and I do think uh, paid vacation paid paternity leave um, free health care free education and stuff like that is fundamental for me to be able to live in a country even if I personally 
wouldn't ever use those benefits. Next question. Do you have to worry about wild animals out there? Uh, I would say no. They are definitely more scared of us than we are of them. Uh, so um, anytime I see a moose or something, uh, they kind of run away quickly. And I have so far never seen a bear. Uh, I understand that bears can be a problem in uh, again the states because when i'm out camping there uh, it seems to be very important to like lock up your food and stuff so the bears won't come but that is not a problem here in sweden i would say how's your leg doing uh, for you who don't know i had a surgery on my left leg because I had a vein that was not working perfectly. Um, so I had a surgery earlier this year. Uh, it was horrible and I had to stay awake for the whole procedure. It hurt so so much but I'm so glad I did it because the leg is so much better. I actually filmed my wounds a little bit um, earlier this month so I might show you that clip right now you can see my scars from the surgery here it still feels a little bit weird sometimes both like the actual vein I had that hurt but that's way better but I can still feel it sometimes but like the scars I can feel I don't know how to describe it but it's like it's almost like itching sometimes I think it was this one that was actually very very infected at one point I had to care for it a lot through like one and a half months or something I think it was I had to clean it several times a day and put bandage over it and stuff until the infection eventually went away. Next person is wondering how I pay for food, rent, phone bill, etc. Do I ride a bike to save money on gas? Am I independently wealthy? Uh, no, I'm not independently wealthy. Uh, I do have some money saved up for emergencies, yes, but I'm definitely not independently wealthy in that sense. How I am able to afford this kind of lifestyle where I'm basically not working, at least not a regular job right now. I mean, I do work with these videos, but I don't have a paying job in that sense. And that works out because the expenses are so low. Uh, I have no rent. Um, the house I live in is owned by my parents. And electricity is kind of cheap up here in the north as well because we have a lot of water here. So we have water power and we have wind turbines and stuff. So my main expenses um, is um, gas for my car and food. Next question is if I have siblings. Yes, I do have one younger brother. It is almost three years apart from us. We used to fight a lot when we were kids, but nowadays we are good friends and barely ever fight anymore. Do you, run, do you, do you jump into the rivers in the middle of winter? I'm guessing you who ask this is quite new to this channel uh, because I think most people who have been watching for a while have seen me do all different kinds of swims um, including during the winter. So yes, uh, I jump into the water no matter the season. Um, I love taking ice cold dips, it makes me feel alive.
And the next question. Are you currently dating anyone? Uh, no, I am not dating anyone. And I'm quite happy with being by myself right now. I can definitely feel that I need to socialize a little bit, which is a weird feeling for me, because one of the reasons I moved out here is because I like to be by myself. So now I can actually feel like, oh, I want to go out and meet people, which is a weird feeling for me. But uh, it's more in a friendship kind of way. Um, I'm not actively looking for anyone for a relationship right now. If that one person would show up, absolutely, I'm all here for it, but I'm not desperate, I'm not actively looking. What YouTube channels are you watching? Well, I think this will be obvious for people who have been watching my videos for a while, uh, but my absolute favorite is Jonna Jinton. Um, she is one of the main reasons or main inspir inspirations. Do you say that? She is the, one of the <laughs> reasons I moved out here, basically. Um, she inspired me so much. When I um, discovered her videos, it was like I just knew I had to do the kind of same thing she had done. Um, moving out to the countryside. It was like I could feel myself again for the first time in a long while. Like I could feel who I actually was because I kind of lost that uh, in the city, trying to be someone I'm not. I mean, I've always been myself but I tried, I still try to like, like going out on to bars and stuff. Um, because that's what you're supposed to do on a weekend in the city. But I never really felt like that was my kind of thing. So then when I found Jonna Jinton's videos, I was just like, oh, this is where I belong in nature. Yeah, that may be a long answer, but Jonna Jinton is my absolute favorite YouTuber, um, so I can even watch her videos several times in a row, uh, the same video. <laughs> Other than that, I can watch um, Saving Siskola. It's a woman in um, Finland um, who also is kind of living out at the countryside. And then I watch Tommy and Peter. They are a gay couple. Yeah, I can watch um, a few gay couples since I'm gay myself. But like I said, my absolute favorite is Jonna Jinton. I am forever thankful for the inspiration she has given me. And I wouldn't have this YouTube channel if it wasn't for her. I One of the reasons I started this was because I felt like I got so much from Jonna that I wanted to pay it forward. Um, I wanted to maybe perhaps do what Jonna did for me for someone else. And oh my god, I almost get emotional. Um, it just meant a lot. Um, the inspiration that I got from from her um, and I just wouldn't live this kind of lifestyle today if it wasn't for her. Whew, okay that was <laughs> more emotional than I thought I would get. How much snow do you usually get during winter? Well, since um, I just moved up here this year, I'm more used to the snow in Stockholm. And that is like this much, or this much from the ground, maybe, when it's most. 
um, and then uh, after a few days it's gone again. But up here it can become quite a lot. It's so deep snow but thanks to these snowshoes I can actually get around. So yes it will be a lot of snow this winter and I'm not quite sure I'm ready for it. But it will be fun as well. It will be an adventure. Yeah. Are you eating well and do you get the right amount of nutrients? That's a good question. Uh, especially since I'm vegan. I can guess that people uh, can wonder. But the answer is yes. <laughs> I eat quite a lot. Maybe even a little bit too much sometimes. I know you can't see that uh, on my weight because I have a very fast metabolism but I eat quite a lot and I also eat a lot of sweets and I know that's not good but the food I eat, the actual food not the desserts, are a lot of lentils and legumes and uh, vegetables, all that kind of stuff. But I actually went to the doctor earlier this year to take a blood sample and the results was really, really good. Nothing wrong with it at all. I had all the vitamins and minerals and everything you need to stay strong. So there is no need for any concern. Someone else just arrived here. So if you hear something in the background, it's probably them. Next question. Is Halloween a big thing in Sweden? Uh, I would say no to that. It's not nearly as big as it is in uh, the United States. Uh, not at all. Uh, I would say that it is growing, I guess. Um, it's probably bigger now than it was like 20 years ago. So it's not big, but it's getting bigger. Uh, but in general, I would say that um, Swedes are not as wild when it comes to celebrating holidays. Uh, Christmas is our biggest one, but even then it's not as crazy as it can be uh, elsewhere. We actually even have a word for when it's not too much or too little, when it's just enough. <laughs> that word is lagom, uh, and we want most things to be lagom. Uh, not too extra, but also not too little. Just the right amount. And that's how we celebrate holidays as well, I would say. And the next one is... Um, I'm an avid... Is that how you pronounce it? I'm an avid gardener. So I'm curious about what you will grow next season. Yes, I want to grow my own garden next season. But this is the first time I do this, so I'm not quite sure exactly what I can grow and stuff. So I will experiment a lot. Um, I will, I know potatoes work well, so I will um, grow potatoes, uh, maybe carrots. Uh, I want to grow broccoli because I eat that a lot. Yeah, just like vegetables that I usually use when cooking. And then this would, of course, also be a way of me to hopefully minimize my spending on food. Which goes back a little bit to the question of how I can afford to live like this. Um, yeah. <sighs> how do you say the name Alexander in Swedish? Uh, we say it Alexander. Then of course there are some actions uh, there are some accents in Swedish as well. I am from Stockholm, so I speak Stockholmska. Uh, and I would say Alexander. What is the scariest thing about being alone in nature? Do you believe in ghosts? And yes, here comes the story I was waiting to tell you. I kinda do believe in ghosts. I kind of don't want to believe in them in one way, because I do believe in science a lot, but I do believe in them. 
you know, simply because so many strange things has happened to me. So right about when I moved up here, I noticed that the tap uh, by the sink in the kitchen was kind of leaking a little bit. And um, it has done that a few times before, so I didn't think it was that big of a deal, uh, because it was very, very little. But yeah, uh, the evening comes, and um, I sit in my bedroom in front of the computer, and then I hear someone in the hallway. So I find the courage to go out there and take a look, but there's no one there. But still, I'm convinced there is someone there, because I knew I heard someone. So I searched the entire house, every room, on the bottom floor, on the top floor, under every bed that we have, under the couches, everything because I was certain there was someone in the house, but I couldn't find anyone. And then I go to bed. And I actually managed to fall asleep, even though I was scared. So the following morning, uh, this is where it get weird for me, um, I walk to the kitchen and then to the tap because I want to have my first glass of water for the day. And in the sink, I see a little plastic circle that you use to fix uh, water when it's uh, dripping from the tap. And we only have those things in a box in the hallway where I heard someone the night before. So somehow this plastic thing has found its way from a box in the hallway all the way into the kitchen and into the sink. How is that possible? I'm thinking that it is my grandfather. He is the one who bought this house from the beginning and this was his paradise. He loved this place like no other place on earth. And it's very, it was very important for him that uh, this house would be taken care of. So the fact that we had a leaking um, tap and I hear someone around where we have these plastic things in the hallway and then the next day it's laying in the sink by the sink that is <laughs> broken. To me that's a sign that my grandfather was there and he wanted me to fix the sink. Even if it was just a small, small little leak, he wanted something done about it. So to answer your question about ghosts, yes. Um, weird things like this has happened to me throughout uh, my life. Um, this one is just the latest one. and. In one way, I really want to be able to explain this um, with a natural explanation, but how? How can I do that? How can I naturally, ex naturally explain how this plastic thing, this small little plastic thing, could just all of a sudden be in the kitchen? I can't explain it. But to answer the question if I'm scared other than that, uh, I think no. Um, I don't think I am. Um, we'll see when it gets even darker outside uh, during winter, but so far I would say no. Did you ever have a cat? No. Uh, I've had a dog though, and I had a golden retriever, and I want to have a dog again. This time also a golden retriever. I love them. What zodiac sign are you? Uh, I'm an Aquarius. Is there any possibility for gay people to gather and have a community where you live? Uh, I, I'm not completely sure. Uh, I mean, I have been in um, Östersund, the closest city, uh, and I've seen a little like posters about, oh, um, a gay cafe during Saturdays or something. Um, so I think there might be something, but I haven't 
gone there yet. I might go eventually, though. Like I said, I have... Um, I feel like I need to socialize a little bit more now compared to in the city. So I might go. How is it like being gay in Sweden in general? It's really good when it comes to laws and uh, the government and stuff. Um, we're allowed to get married, we're allowed to have kids. Um, for an example, uh, one of my two best friends, they are a gay couple. They um, are now pregnant uh, and they got help from the government with the insemination. Uh, which means they didn't have to pay anything for this. Which is a wonderful thing that we have a government that support us like that. Um, and I'm so, so happy for them. But of course, it doesn't mean that everything is good. For example, when you're younger and you're in school and stuff, uh, you, you might get bullied and people might tease you and use bug um, as a bad word. Um, it's basically the Swedish word for fag. So that is really, really um, sad. Um, it definitely happened to me. People said stuff to me when I was in school. They did. It wasn't extreme, maybe, but it happened. But as soon as you kind of like enter adulthood, whenever that is, it gets way, way better. And I have never heard anything mean uh, to me in a long while now, I would say. And now the last question, and I think this is a good one. What would you do? Where would you live? And who would you be if money no object. I would be right here as I am now. I really do think this is paradise on earth just like my granddad did. If I had a lot of money something I would do is that I would buy a big piece of land and I would turn it into a nature reserve. Um, somewhere where everyone can go into the forest and just be. Um, everyone is already allowed to go into the forest in Sweden. We have something called Allemansrätten, which means everyone is allowed to go into the forest, no matter if someone else owns the land or not. So the real reason why I would do that is to make sure that uh, the nature can can be, simply put. Uh, I don't want anyone to cut down the trees, I don't want anything, anyone to ruin uh, nature for personal gains, to get money or whatever. I would want the nature to be able to live its own life. Um, so that's something I would do if I had a lot of money. So yeah, I think I would try to use the money for something good help nature, help people get out in nature, to experience nature. And I realize this might just sound cheesy, like, oh, he's saying all the right things, but it really is what I would do. But with that said, I would definitely do some selfish things as well. Like I would probably want to have my own house, since this is my parents' house. It would be nice to have my very own place. It would probably still be the same village, but <clears throat> I would want my very own house, I think. Uh, and I would probably buy myself some more camera equipment, uh, like the follow-up to the camera I'm using now, which actually do record uh, 60 frames per second in 4K. And I would buy myself, I would buy myself a better drone. Um, I would allow myself to eat out more, probably. I mean, I do eat out. It's not like I never do, but I do treat it more like a 
an occasion like oh let's it's Saturday let's go out and have something to eat uh, once in a while but I would probably do it more cooking can be fun if you do it with someone else I think but cooking can also be so 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 extremely boring especially when I don't really find any inspiration to try something new uh, and I just end up doing the same dishes I've always done so yeah I would put money on food I would say but other than that I would more or less live the same kind of life I'm living today and yeah that was the last question thank you so much for sticking through all of my answers I'm so glad that you wanted to ask me these questions and that you are spending your valuable time getting to know me a little bit more through my answers and feel, please feel free to answer some of these questions yourself in the comments section or just say hi <laughs> I don't know I'm gonna start heading back to the house now go back home and actually make something to eat talking about food and that fits perfectly with the fire because it's about to burn out see you soon again bye